10 years ago when we started the center surprisingly enough there was not a global platform where ceos of the major civil society organizations internationally could get together there were national platforms but not a global one and uh, in the beginning, CEOs still needed to sort to say find out what they wanted to do on the platform. It was obviously uh, this was a platform where you would share experiences, where you would swap information. And uh, the longer the platform existed, the more the CEOs developed trust to each other. And today, the center is very much used by many of the leading CEOs to gather advice on issues where they find very difficult to ask either their colleagues or to ask their chairs. Uh, so uh, we have built a community of leaders uh, on uh, a basis of deep trust. And uh, I believe that uh, we have facilitated learning for CEOs uh, across the sector on that, on that uh, basis. Now, once the center existed for some time, CEOs wanted to do more than learn from each other. And we started uh, to develop joint projects. Uh, we uh, started to explore disruption. We looked into new business models. We looked into what it takes to change organizational culture. Uh, we started scanning the horizon and did a lot of other uh, things which uh, the leaders in our sector uh, told us were useful for them. My major surprises, I would say, uh, over the last 10 years were two things. The first one, I found that ICSOs found it very difficult uh, to change their organizations. Many of the organizations are really big, are really complex have many national members around the world and uh, to come to one pattern of change and to change fast is a real challenge for them. Uh, if I look back, I have to say in the beginning, change was not so much a topic. Today, change is on everybody's agenda and the organizations are changing faster than ever before. Sadly, the world hasn't slowed down. Meanwhile, the world is also changing faster than ever before. Uh, so we are still not at a point where I believe that ICSOs are meeting and matching the speed uh, of uh, the external changes. So our sector still has a way to go uh, in order to catch up where uh, they need to be and to uh, be of maximum use to their missions. The second surprise, uh, which came even more uh, as a surprise to me, was the fact that we cannot take uh, our mandate and our legitimacy uh, any longer as something which is there and which can't be questioned. Uh, I have lived most of my life in civil society as uh, being part of the good guys, so to say. I didn't have to explain what I was doing when I told people that I was working for a civil society organization. Nowadays, in many parts of the world, that may make you suspicious. Governments uh, take uh, very much care in painting a picture of civil society organizations, especially the international ones, as foreign agents, as people who don't have a mandate to work, who interfere in national affairs, um, who are a danger for security and so on and so forth. So something which was absolutely unthinkable for uh, many years is now nearly the new norm. We have to explain what we're doing. We have to justify that we're doing no harm. We have to justify our very existence. And uh, this challenge, I'm afraid, uh, will be with us uh, for the next years to come. And we need to find better answers uh, than the ones we found so far.
Obviously, uh, there are many challenges ahead of our sector. And uh, let me just um, list four, which I believe are really crucial, but that's certainly not a complete list of what's uh, up and waiting for us. The first one I already alluded to is uh, the topic of shrinking civic space. Uh, this is a challenge which international civil society organizations have to face, but more importantly, it's a challenge which citizens around the world are facing. So more and more governments don't believe that their citizens should have the right to participate in running their society and shaping their society in jointly charting the way ahead for their societies. And wherever you go, not only in the global south, not only in dictatorships, but also in democracies in the global north, around the globe, uh, we have situations where citizens are not able to speak out their uh, opinions if they are not in line with the government, where we are not able to come together as citizens and discuss and uh, show our uh, perspectives, uh, where we are not able to raise issues on the internet or in the press without uh, uh, being in danger of being uh, taken to prison or punished in any other ways. So the situation for citizens around the world is really deteriorating and civil society organizations like the ones who work at the center uh, need to do something about it. And they need to become much more systematic, much more bold and courageous in addressing this issue. The second area where I believe we have major challenges coming our way uh, is the question of better accountability. I've been working in this area for decades and we have made some progress, that's uh, for sure, uh, but we still haven't made progress or not enough progress where it's really essential this is accountability uh, towards uh, the recipients towards the people we aim to work with so everybody who gives us money all donors come with their accountability requirements and we will fulfill them professionally so we are accountable to the donors but we are not as accountable uh, to our beneficiaries and i believe this is the more important accountability. We are not about money, we're about changing people's lives for the better. And so our most important accountability has to be to the people we serve. And uh, our sector needs to get much better in empowering the people and in serving the people and in doing that at the terms people set for us. The third point where I see a major challenge is power distribution within the international civil society organizations. All these organizations come from a time where power was held at national level. And obviously in our organizations, power is also held at national level. But if you look at the challenges around us, like climate change, uh, eradication of species, lack of fresh water, uh, global migration and other challenges, they're all international and not national. They can't be resolved by one nation or by a group of nations. They have to be addressed and resolved globally. So much more power needs to shift to the global level in order to resolve these issues. At the same time, the internet and modern forms of communication have empowered individuals and have empowered the local level. So it's also important that we transfer many more decisions and many more and much more authority to the, to the local level and empower people to take the decisions which concern them in the places where they live. So seen from a national organization, this means we need to transfer power in two directions. One is the global direction and the other one is the local direction. I hope for enlightened leaders at local, at national level 
who are able and willing to transfer power as it's best for their organization and it's best for fulfilling their mission. My fourth challenge is one which is a challenge to our sector overall, but also to the center in specific. As uh, the roles of civil society organizations are changing, as the funding sources are changing, as funding is shifting, uh, many of the large organizations face an uncertain future. They need to be able to change, they need to find new ways of resourcing their work. And as the center is so dependent from the 15 owners we have, all of them international civil society organizations, uh, the center will uh, be the first or one of the first uh, points of saving money uh, if uh, our owners come under financial pressure. This would be a tragedy as so far as in times of crisis you need to think strategically and that's what you have the center for and you need to work together and that's what the center is facilitating. So I very much hope that over the next 10 years we will uh, navigate those and other challenges successfully and uh, my successor or the successor of my successor will uh, be able to take a positive uh, resume of the next decade of the center's existence.